Okay, so uh, today is the uh, basic UBBL fire requirement for Bachelor Science of Architecture. So today, um, how to reduce this? Okay. So um, it's uh, many people quite scared with this uh, topic because um, uh, it's because of uh, number one is the the mindset. The the mindset that most students have is actually this is very hard. That is the um, uh, it's not mistake, but it's a um, uh, plethora of ideas where you always think that fire requirement is hard. Actually, it is not. Um, because why? It's because of okay, wait. Okay. It's because of um, all buildings, beautiful or not, comply with fire requirement of the country, including Malaysia. Means that wherever you go, all buildings that you have seen must and always comply with fire requirements of the country. So in Malaysia, it's not an exception. So what you need to do is change your mindset to be that the fire requirement is actually the guideline to better design, not a burden or stumbling block. With that, you will be able to um, see the design will be much more smoother and easier for you. Okay, so um, one way is to um, hold your own book. Okay, for example, I have my own, I'm not sure if you can see this, it's um, getting transparent, this book. But yeah, this book has been with me for um, more than eight years already, um, learning um, UBL so that I can um, understand a lot. So this is the cover of the book, Always Change Color uh, every year. Um, doesn't mean that every year have its own um, upgrades or updates, but it's actually it's just um, color based on printing date. Okay, so um, as a start, let we, let's learn about Uniform Building by Law, 1984. Number one, it is an extension from the Street Drainage and Building Act 1974 Act 133. So this is actually um, Uniform Building by Law is the extension. So UBBL is allow to uh, is to allow state government to modify necessary by law so that it is suitable for different local authority. Because number one, UBBL the in the in general is for any building can be used, but in local authorities, they are different. Uh, for example, Kuala Lumpur is uh, city, Shah Alam is city, PJ, Subang Jaya are city, Johor Bahru also city, but not all are cities. Some others are municipal and others are uh, just um, smaller, uh, which is we call um, Bibi, apa, um, Majlis Perbandaran, Majlis Bandaraya, and then Majlis Daerah. All are actually using same UBBL, but they have its different um, category of um, some tiny, tiny things that actually allow um, to modify. That's why UBBL is designed that way. With that um, allowance for um, some changes, it is uh, so that um, the requirements for, for example, in Kuala Lumpur, which is very stringent, cannot be implement at the uh, Kuala Selangor because of um, different density of the uh, city, you know. So with that, you have to uh, modify a little bit here and there. So this is the thing that uh, it happened. So in general, they are uh, UBBL 1984, which is uh, applied for any, any state uh, as a basis. And then each state has its own uh, UBBL, some of them in 1985, some of them in 1986. Uh, and a few states already updated, Kelantan, Terengganu, Pulau Pinang, which is uh, 2012, and Selangor already um, updated twice, 2012 and then 2015. And most amendments are related to fire requirement. Okay, so let's flip the UBBL. Today, we are referring the original UBBL, okay, the one that I'm holding here, um, even part three exams, uh, Lam, Steve prefer this version. 
So don't leave your UBBL clean. Whenever you are um, taking notes uh, today, just scribble your uh, whatever um, tag or sketch or compartmentalize or whatever fill your uh, pages one by one. Even I always uh, sketch and uh, scribble on each page whenever I feel need to add additional content. Okay, so as a start, we will use the um, the table of content because this is the entrance of the book and where to flip your uh, file requirement. In the UBBL, um, they are uh, part one until 10, sorry, nine, um, that uh, covers everything, okay? However, only part seven, eight, nine, only for fire requirement. Others is different. You can still refer, but um, it's uh, not applicable for this subject, which is uh, building services. For example, part three, space light and ventilation is also important. Um, part four, temporary con works connection, not necessary. Part five, not necessary. And others is okay. Okay, so, um, okay, wait. Oh, I misarranged. Okay, so, um, we already know there are uh, part seven, part eight, and nine is our uh, requirement in the UBBL. Um, so, um, for degree level, there are only five steps that you must remember this requirement by heart. Almost no calculation. Almost zero calculation for this. Okay. Number one is purpose group. Number two is compliance to bylaw 194. Yes or no. Num then the next one is to identify estimated building area and volume. That is number three. Next one would be identify your active firefighting requirement, which is referring to tense schedule. Next would be date and limit and traveling distance. Okay, this is the first five, must remember. And then the next one, the number six, other necessary calculations. This is only depends on um, if it is required or not, but I will give a very basic uh, calculation. Uh, I will teach very basic calculation, okay? First, this um, first five, if you must guess to remember by um, sequence, this sequence, purpose group, compliance uh, by law 194, uh, identify the building area and volume, and then uh, firefighting requirement, uh, 10 schedule, and then last, um, the dead end limit and travel distance. This in order. Okay, so um, am I so fast? I think, okay, good, right? Uh, <clears throat> okay, all right, proceed. Okay, so um, number one is uh, purpose group for the fifth schedule. Okay, um, dalam uh, our UBBL, uh, there are 10 schedule in total, but the first four is not nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with fire. Number five until 10, all are, uh, all schedules are related to fire requirement. If you go to the fifth schedule, you must be uh, at the almost last chap chapter, which is the part nine, okay? If you click through your UBBL, um, fifth schedule should be in, I believe in page 133, okay? Um, there will be two tables in the fifth schedule. Number one is purpose group. Number two is compartmentation. Okay. Compartmentation maybe sound very uh, complicated thing, but it's actually very simple. It's just to compartment uh, building into uh, a few things. Okay. Um, because um, purpose group is the uh, thing that actually control the building type. There are many building types in the world, um, but in Malaysia, we already decided into eight types of purpose group. So uh, you can see here in the list, purpose group one, individual houses, landed house, purpose group two, institution, hospital, library, schools uh, included, university also in this uh, category, um, 
like uh, daycare and so on, also in this category, um, old folk homes also in this category, purpose group two. And then next will be purpose group three, is the multi-story residential. More than uh, three stories and above, it will consider under this category. Next will be purpose group four, which is office, uh, straightforward office, purpose group five, shop, six is factory, seven is assembly, and also um, uh, now um, updated will be sports, uh, transportation buildings under this category, and then purpose group eight is storage. Okay, um, more details is here. So whenever you flip the uh, fifth um, schedule, fifth schedule, I not sure you can see or not, but this is what you see: the description of the uh, purpose group one until eight. So with this. It's actually, you can see very detailed. For example, office, okay? Um, premise used for office purpose, meaning thereby a purpose for administration, calculation, uh, clerical work, uh, book writing, bookkeeping, uh, sorting papers, typing, duplicating, machine calculating, and so on. Okay? And then, what about shop? Shop, um, maybe you think what shop, but there are a lot when you read the description. For example, um, retail sales option, business of lending books, but now business of lending books, which is um, basically it's library, now it's become institution uh, in the revision of uh, 2012, okay? And then periodical of purpose gain, business of barber and hairdresser, premises to which members of public are invited to resort for purpose of delivery goods for repair or other treatments and or themselves carrying out repairs or treatments of goods. So there are so many things. They are really, really written this so that you can I imagine whatever activity you do in the project, this is the purpose group. All right. Um, uh, then, um, place of assembly. This is another uh, interesting topic because in uh, apa nama, um, bachelor, usually um, institution, office, place of assembly is the most common uh, purpose group, building type that being uh, used for projects. Okay, for the... Wait, what happened? Somebody... Uh... Are you broadcasting to something? Alamak. So I need to reshare this thing. Can? No, no. Uh, yeah, we can see your screen. Who's my screen? Because uh, I see yes. Chasha's screen now. Okay, now, now we can't see your screen. Um, I have to share it again. I'm afraid. Okay, so I share it again? Yes, please. Okay. All right. Okay, so can you sambung? Boleh, boleh. Okay, sit. So, purpose group uh, seven is place of assembly. Um, it's a place, whether public or private, used for attendance of person or in connection for social, recreational, educational, business or other activities that not comprised in within group one to six. Uh, this is not so detailed, but uh, you can imagine anything that is outside of purpose group 1 and 6, that is purpose group 7. But if we look in more detail, okay, more detail, which is already in uh, written here, this one is actually the um, UBBL Selangor um, 2012. Um, it's already become more detailed for the place of assembly. You can look here um, in the convention center. Museum, art gallery, cinema, theaters, auditorium, place of worship, transportation, passenger terminals. Here, the, the tambah lagi. Previous one tak ada because it's a very um, a gray area. Uh, previously, um, museum, art galleries uh, under um, shop. Even cinemas, uh, no, uh, yeah, museum and gallery. Cinemas is under place of assembly, which is very straightforward. Okay, now this is actually more clearer under um, 
Selangor Premier League BBL. I'm not sure Johor is already updated or not, but I, I, as far as I remember, not yet. Oh, okay. Before I, um, you can see that this also, and whenever they are scheduled, they will be written here by law 134, 138. So, um, means that whenever you see numbers in the UBBL, it must be called as by law. Bukan clause, bukan act, bukan section. Bukan rules, it's by law. Okay, so um, whenever they mention here by law to 134 and 138, it means there is more explanation in this by law. So for the fifth schedule, if you flip to the uh, by law 134, um, which is in the page, uh, page 63, um, it's mentioned about the designation of purpose group. And then when you open to the bylaw 138, you will see the compartmentation, floor and wall, which is actually related. You will, you can do reading on this. Means that um, whenever you see this, you don't understand, you go to the bylaw that is written on the top. Okay, so this is also very important as a start. When you designing, any building, you must make sure you are selecting the right purpose group because each purpose group has different fire requirements. Okay, so now we go to the second, second table in the fifth schedule. In the fifth schedule, this is second table, which is uh, page, um, the next one, 134, page 134. You will see uh, at the bottom a little bit, you can see this table. It mentioned here, there is a uh, mention by law 136. So this by law 136 is actually talking about the limit of um, requirement. Okay. So when you uh, look at this table, purpose group, you will see the numbers of purpose group mentioned here. But now please take your pen and change. Take your pen and change now to your on your book that this, this is not purpose group four. This is purpose group three. This is an error by the publisher because other residential is under purpose group three. So these two must have same. Can you see guys, uh, the, I'm, I'm moving the cursor. I hope you can see. All right, good. Okay. So we can see that because um, these other residential, they have two different requirements, not exceeding 28 meter high and then exceeding 28 meter. So it's actually about same thing. It's just different requirement. So when you have this, you can see the next one is actually the floor area of story building or compartment, which is in meter square or cubic capacity of building compartment in meter cube. So these two columns is talking about the compartmentation. If your building is bigger than this number, you must always refer to the smaller one, okay? Whenever your building is bigger than this number, for example, bigger than uh, 3,000 meters square of the uh, uh, purpose group three other residential, for example, like this one, if we are using this project, we are doing a residential project. Probably if your design is bigger than 3,000 meters square, but still not exceeding 8,000 meter, 8, meter cube, you still must do separation of compartmentation. Means that one part is different to the other compartment. Compartment means you need to literally separate the uh, building with wall or um, separate um, physically, not attach this together. The reason is because um, to control the fire from spreading too big, okay? So this is the reason why you must have this. And then next one is look at the note. Purpose group one, number four, and also seven are excluded as there are no limits applicable under bylaw 138. So that's why here, 
in the purpose group here, this one is wrong. It should be purpose group three. Okay. So far, so good. Any questions regarding this? Anyone has questions? Please. Okay. Compartmentation. What is compartmentation? It's actually so, uh, to make sure that the building is uh, protected. Especially when you have different uh, purpose group in one building. Sometimes like that lah. In Malaysia, we have a lot of examples. Um, uh, for example, uh, podium, uh, you have uh, two things. Uh, car parks and then also shopping mall. And then you have tower. You have two towers. One tower is office, one tower is apartment. So all those things are different purpose group. Shop is Shopping mall is under shop category. Uh, Multi-story parking is under storage. And then the uh, apartment is under other residentials. And then office is under office. Okay, so all those things are having different fire requirement. So you must have understand the limits of the building. Okay, if you have no problem, we proceed to the next one. Uh, but a question uh, student yeah. asked, why 28 meters? Any why 28 there? meters? Yeah. Okay, 28 meters is because of um, like this. Uh, okay, this is outside of, um, this is the part three topic. Eh? 28 meters because um, fire hydrant, um, you know, um, where uh, firemen come and use the fire hydrant, they will have a very big hose, right? That hose can only up to 27 meters. That's what uh, firemen say. So they have that kind of requirement. When you are exceeding 28 meter, usually you have sprinkler already, automatic sprinkler system. So that's why the difference of uh, requirement. Okay. All right. So how to move this? Okay, you have to quit the sketching thing. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so now, just, just now we already seen this uh, bylaw 136, right? Okay, so I just pick this bylaw 136. The provision of compartment wall and floor. Okay, number one, any story or floor which exceed the specified relevant building or the purpose group height or cubic capacity exceeded the specified as relevant shall be divided into compartments means compartment wall and compartment floor compartment means you must be concrete in um, uh, by a uh, um, real project it must be um, they, are, they have certain requirements some are two hours some area must be four hours when it is compartment, it must have uh, it must have must achieve that two hours and four hours. Okay, so no such compartment has any story, the floor area of which exceed the area of relevant to that building, and no such compartment of cubic capacity which exceed that specified as relevant to the building. So they tak bagi the bay. So you must be kurang, kurang okay. Tapi when you read the, the last one here. Um, automatic sprinkler installation by law have effect in, rela in relation to the building as the limits or dimension specified are double. Okay, so whenever you see this, for example, you are doing residential exceeding 28 meter, which is already very high, you must already install um, automatic sprinkler system to the building. So the area of this will be double. 2,000 become 4,000 meter square. You can do one big compartment, not necessary two compartment anymore. And same goes to the uh, capacity of the cubic building. If it is uh, 5,500, now you can do 11,000 um, cubic, met cubic meter uh, in volume. So that's how you do. And this is not only for um, limits of dimension, but also for uh, travel distance, the enemy. No, not the enemy, only travel distance. Sorry. 
Okay. So move on to the next one. How to use the purpose group? When you have a building with multiple purpose group, you must compartmentalize. Means that, for example, you do a project. Um, I don't know. Second year, I do the what? Um, second year, currently they are doing. Uh, some of them are doing libraries, office, more to uh -huh. institutional. Okay, so example, they have two building uh, purpose group. They want to uh, join together the the purpose the the. It must be totally separate. Means that um, uh, office it must be uh, separate and then um, institution also separate. If you can separate the building, it's okay, better. But if you cannot, you because of uh, site constraint, for example, then you can merge. But if you only have like um, one small office, like um, less than quarter of the floor in a um, in a institutional area, that's not considered as different purpose group. That is considered as one purpose group. To con to identify different purpose group is actually where your building is totally um, have two big segments. Kalau dia kecil kecil, it's not considered. Okay, and then here, it, um, Bombo also mentioned it must be literally separate by structure or wall. So if you have sprinkler, the means are double in this bylaw one three six and applied to both uh, traveling distance and compartmentation, but not that end limit. That end limit not counted. We will go through this one later. Okay, so we already covered. Um, Memorize number one just now. Number one is purpose group. Okay, number two is bylaw one nine four. Bylaw one nine four already talked about single staircase in a building. Single staircase in a building ni senang sahaja. Number one, um, I need to use the annotation. Okay, number one must not exceed twelve meter height. When it is mentioned, meter height is actually the floor. Level F F F L. Sorry, uh, alama. Ah, macam tu lah. Okay, so the floor level means that um, if the floor level is um, exceeding twelve meter, then you must have two story, uh, two staircase or more. Okay, and then they mention here provided the building complies certain condition. Um, this one uh, tak apa. No room in the building use any occupancy other than domestic or office purpose. Okay, domestic means house. Okay, uh, house, yeah, no, not other things. And then provided uh, staircase from ground to first will be separated from the remainder of the ground by having FRP not less than two hours. Ni tak apa. Um, then maximum travel distance shall be. 12 meter measured from the door of the room or area to the exit provided the path of travel from any point room to room does not exceed 12 meter so the requirement is quite stringent which is um, domestic and also office and then not higher than 12 meter means that if you do shop house two story shop house is still Okay, to have one one story, uh, one uh, one staircase only. If you cannot comply this, then minimum two staircase. And then subject to design and distances. If it is very far, then you need to add another because of uh, seven schedule. You need to have uh, uh, travel distance, right? So that's why uh, this mentioned this way. So. Most of the time, when you enter second year, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, second year, second semester, you got to have two staircase. Second year, first semester, I think still okay to have one staircase. Based on um, project size, lah, right? Okay. So, huh. Next one, number three. Estimated building area and volume. So, as a student, when you receive a design brief, you already have been written 
the estimated project size, right? So with that, you immediately um, mental calculate your volume size of the project. So one story, three meter, or one story, 3.5 meter. Kalau you want to do big project, then four meters lah, depends on what kind of project. So with that, you immediately can find the volume of the project. These two factors is actually for uh, important shortcut to design. Number one, area info is for fence schedule. Volume info is for bylaw 140, fire appliances access. Okay. So far, you can follow me. All right. So, okay. for this one, we go to the uh, bylaw 140. Okay. Bylaw 140 is actually fire appliances access. All buildings in excess of 7,000 cubic meter shall abut from upon a street or road open space in no less than 12 meter width and accessible to fire brigade appliances. The proportion, proportion of the building abutting the street, road or open space shall be in accordance with the following scale, 7,000 to 28,000 meter cube. Only one sixth of the perimeter building to have this 12 meter width of fire accessible brigade appliances. Means that you have a building, you have a road. If you already have a road, no problem. It's already considered as um, the road for the, uh, for the fire access. But if your project is big, for example, third year, you have a very big project, maybe two acre, right? Two acre or more, your building is in the middle, then you need access, you need to do access. So this access, this access, the road towards the building, you must comply this 12 meter width, okay? But in uh, because of your building volume, I already calculated. No matter what you do in third year final, also will never exceed twenty eight thousand meter cube. That's my my own calculation lah. I don't know uh, if um, uh, UTM do bigger than this. So it's only one six of perimeter building. Means that if the perimeter meet is uh, 100 meter square then alamak why suddenly hilang sorry eh. i cannot i cannot expand the annotation okay sorry i need to redo apologies okay this is the project this is the site you have a big site for example two acre right so your uh, fire requirement is only probably one six only one upon six only for fire which is also applicable for um, other vehicles so means that it's almost nothing to to do there is no additional thing to do because fire requirement um, the um, this road is actually enough if you use the service road or uh, general entrance also can it can be replaced so there is no additional specific road just for fire appliance access fire appliance access is uh, in bahasa pasar is um, laluan bomber so far okay okay yeah. Okay, so um, here is actually in Malay, the same thing. Um, si padu bangunan, perimeter bangunan, then uh, uh, access perkakas bomba, perimeter bangunan, kali uh, jarak minimum. So, jarak minimum is actually you refer to this one lah. Uh, um, just checking. Aiman, Dr. Aiman. 
third year yes. project what is the uh, plot area size uh third year i'm not sure i'm not sure uh third year i don't know whether we have do you have third year here and then from third year okay with this example if uh, in my in my university saigi university um third year is 5000 meter square which is actually quite small compared to other university lah 5000 meter square if you multiply with the height of the big uh, floor um for example 4 meter is 20 meter 20000 meter square so 20000 meter cube right so it's still quite small uh, which is still within the one sixth of the project uh, means that you only need one sixth of the um, 12 meter uh, fire access so not to worry if you have um, additional road outside it's already considered so you don't have to do uh, this 12 meter uh, fire access inside your site no need when you have this uh, jalan so very simple you just do checking okay so i hope we can we can move to the next one okay um now next one is actually uh, fire hydrant some students always want to know where the fire hydrant should be located okay if your project is huge third year and above i believe you need to have um, to locate your fire hydrant it's mentioned here in the ubbl selangor 2012 uh, not in the uh, original one it's mentioned here 45 meter from the entrance of the site that is the first one within 25 meter tidak melebihi 45 meter and then um, in between one to another is 90 meter so kalau lukis okay site you have very uh, small space i mean you might have an internal road okay so the first 45 meter would be your first hydrant okay sorry hydrant is h okay so that is your first hydrant so this first hydrant is within 45 meter and the next one um, not sure sorry um, um... Can you use the four point uh, annotation? I don't know where they can use that. Let's try. Sorry, that works well. Yep, I hope it works better. Okay, so building. Sorry, yeah, Chintai. <laughs> the, the fire access only. Ticket, uh, yeah. Okay, it's the first, which is within 45 meter and the next one it must be 90 meter and when you have this the fire access must continue because this is about lorry bomber you know lorry bomber you must able to access because this lorry bomber the dalam dia ada pump so this actually they carry the pump and then they pump the water from the hydrant and then spray the water to the building that's how it is uh, the purpose of the hydrant. Um, but in third year, I already do studies. No more than one. If you go master, then maybe have uh, maybe one, uh, maybe more than two. But in degree, one is enough. Within 44, 45 meter, that's all. 45 meter from the entrance, okay? So you can have that if already have within the site for example the site have outside here then no need you don't have to do a fire hydrant inside your perimeter because you have already outside of the of the site it's okay it's already sufficient okay so 
Any questions regarding fire hydrant location? Requirement? Okay, so we already know that um, degree no more than one six. So within that, you might have one fire hydrant. That's all. Other than that, it's already over providing. In Malaysia, um, over provide thing is actually um, something that we don't want to do because all those things have costs, right? So in real practice, whenever architect provide, uh, over provide, then you are actually not great. You are just good enough. So we don't want to be the good enough. We want to be best. So to be best, um, learn um, the the best. But of course, the, not 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 normally from me, but from others also. Okay. So just now we already uh, because of this uh, item number three, info, uh, area and volume. Volume already know um, the fire access, and then the the area is ten schedule. Okay. So this is the thing that we go, and then the ten schedule here. This is the the point number four. Um, 10 scheduled active firefighting. Uh, why start firefighting first? It's because of um, um, active requirement is more expensive in your project. More things to consider and it is also important to, to consider early of the project to save time. If you start designing from passive requirement, then suddenly discovered active requirement is needed, you have to redesign the project, literally. And then remember the purpose of checking this schedule is to check the limit of traveling distance and compartmentation. So when you check the project, for example, um, you do office. Okay, so this is the example of uh, 10th schedule. 10th schedule is actually quite long because um, the uh, very detailed um, uh, description mentioned here. So you got to check one by one where is your uh, building requirement, project requirement. For example, you do office. Office, uh, five story uh, and or uh, over exceeding 1000 meter square, either you must you must select more stringent. And then it is here, we mentioned here in the system node two, they have A and G, most of this, right? I already uh, written here, it is uh, A is automatic sprinkler and G must be host reel. So uh, these two must have. So automatic sprinkler, uh, not all. Okay, for example, like if the office is exceeding 30 meter, when you say 30 meter is the floor level, okay? Not the uh, top of the building, it's the floor level. So top of the building can be higher. Or uh, 10,000 square meter, then you must have both. Uh, automatic sprinkler and host reel. Other than that, you don't need. Uh, less, for example, like shop, the uh, requirement, single story, no need, double story. Uh, single story, if it is big, then you must also have. Double story, you must have, then so on. So this is only two uh, uh, example, office and shop. Actually, they have all, all um, purpose group in the uh, 10 schedule. So what I want to show is actually that this will affect your uh, project. If it is automatic sprinkler, then double your uh, requirement. If it is host reel, no. Host reel is not considered. Okay, so this is important to check. For example, you do, um, uh, for most of you, the projects is actually under purpose group seven, uh, the place of assembly. So place of assembly in the 10th schedule is actually quite short uh, and it's actually very, uh, very stringent. What upper gear must be not uh, automatic sprinkler. So with that, you must uh, immediately check the uh, distance for the fire requirement. Okay, um, that's all. You just do checking. If it is you need sprinkler, then immediately go to seven. The end limit travel distance and calculation. Travel distance double. The end limit cannot. Okay, in this. Um, seven schedule, there are two tables also. Sama macam the fifth schedule. Um, let's go one by one. Okay, I, I think I'm not too fast, not too slow. I think you're okay. Distance, 
distance to the nearest staircase. Okay, so the the furthest wall to the nearest staircase is considered as the end. This is example of shop. In the um, uh, UBBL uh, seven schedule, you can check. Uh, if you you have now, you just check. Okay, the the first table um, seven schedule is page one four seven, and then the second uh, second one is under one four eight. Okay, so this is the the end. That end um, is fifteen meter for shop, but if it is um, more than that, you must have you must add additional staircase. If it is further than fifty meter. Very easy to suggest. So you got to make sure you limit this. And then travel distance. When an alternative staircase is available at any point in a building. So example, shop. Um, travel distance is adding additional staircase because it's very far from one to another. Okay, whenever you stay one place, you must have 30 meter without sprinkler to the left or to the right so if you set if you stay at this um, you are standing in the red dot here you can go 30 meter to the left or right without sprinkler or with sprinkler 45 meter 45 meter to the left 45 meter to the right that is the um, travel distance if sprinkler so the difference is actually a lot you know that's why you identify your um, purpose group you identify the, the active requirement. Kalau kena automatic sprinkler, immediately 45 meter. Then you can save a lot of space. Kalau you buat 30 meter and then, oh, kena tambah sprinkler. That is a waste of space. Okay, then they also mention here, occupancy is more than 6 meter. 6 people. Okay, now ada pula occupancy. Just now kita cakap pasal occupancy. Occupancy is actually related to calculation. Okay. So far, so good. If yes, kita move on again. Example. Okay. This is example of hotel. Um, fire fighting lobby design. Okay. How to see uh, that end? Okay. Number one is purpose group. Hotel is under purpose group three. Uh, other residential. Okay. So if you go to this page. Um, um, alamak, tak nampak. Never mind. In the seventh schedule, um, you can see uh, other residential is split into three the three category: hotel, flat, and dorm. All those three have different uh, requirement. Whenever you see NR not required, it means not required lah. But if you see zero, it means the staircase must be at the zero meter from the furthest wall. It means that. At the end of the wall, must compulsory have fire staircase. For example, the dominatory lah, um, the dead end limit mentioned there is zero. Means that you cannot have dead end limit. Your dead end limit is staircase. The last wall is staircase. Okay, so um, it mentioned the dead end limit for hotel is 10 meter. So 10 meter here. So from this door, to the end of the um, to the end of the furthest wall is 10 meter but from this um, door of the suite is another one okay there are two things um, in how to say this in um, designing um, number one you are only allowed maximum two dead end and with the requirement, the first dead end is not more than 6% occupancy. So, for example, like suite or hotel room. So, it is designed to be less than 6 people, right? So, for example, this suite and this suite at the end top here also both um, less than 6 people occupancy. So, it can have another 10 meter um, dead end limit. So from this door to the furthest wall, it must be 10 meter. Same goes to the other side. Wall, furthest wall, 
to the exit door 10 meter and then from this door to the fire fighting um, lobby here is another 10 meter so only two maximum date and limit with uh, requirement it is not more than six person occupancy okay from this one we can see that the staircase is still further inside not exactly on the outside here why is because of this is fire fighting lobby fire fighting lobby have um, in this case it is actually pressurized uh, dalam bahasa melayu isi tekan but alamak pressurized uh, how to explain you means that whenever you enter this area you will feel the aircon is very hard it's quite strong yes ada angin tolak betul if one so um, the staircase also must be pressurized so these two area must be pressurized so you can put the um, fire staircase at the end of the um, this firefighting lobby and this blue uh, lobby is the passenger lift lobby this passenger lift lobby is different from the firefighting lobby firefighting lobby has its own fire requirement which is the number one must be above 18 meter from the ground if it is less than 18 meter no need to have fire lift okay simple 18 meter is the floor eh? not the building height okay so far so good this one i guess you are quite understand with this okay so now we zoom out you can see the whole building just now we are only at the right side of the building but now we can see the whole uh, plan however from this whole plan we only see two staircase one at the left and one at the right and even this is actually not at the end of the building it is a little bit center based on the um, you know you want to maximize your building potential so you want to design with uh, maximum dead end after dead end then you can see your fire staircase this one don't have um, lift because you already have fire fighting lobby at the right so with this alone so already can cover the whole building so you don't have to do too many uh, lift design just uh, one side is um, only fire staircase and the other side only um, lift fire lift fire fighting lift sorry okay so now um, you already know the, uh, the dead end limit the travel distance is all in between units here they have options to run so whenever you are standing at any point in the building you can go to two or more uh, alternative uh, escape route so left or right and then you just check your uh, limit if it is sprinkler for the hotel then it's 45 if it is um, non-sprinkler then it will be 30 meter from one to one so for this one is because of the building length is 100 meter we assume that this floor is already um, exceeding the requirement so you must have sprinkler so whenever at any point you are standing right both left or right is 45 meter from the where you are standing so easy okay so when you have that then you already achieve your fire fighting requirement all these are a mixture of passive and active but when you have um, active then you need to add um, the exact requirement you already learned in the building services too uh, macam sprinkler apa kena ada There's, uh, apa, kalau host reel apa kena ada right so I don't have to explain that in detail okay so this is the um, table and actually this is the first table in the uh, seventh schedule again uh, like I mentioned please go and read the bylaw 165 166 167 170 
So do all this uh, by law is actually explaining in detail this dead end limit and then travel distance. Okay, number one here is dead end limit. Number two and three is um, travel distance. Okay, one is unsprinkled, another one is sprinkled. Senang, banyak senang. Only refer, no need to calculate. Okay, only dekat sini je, parking garage. This parking garage, okay, you can see here 50, uh, 30 plus 45x. Bila nampak 30 plus, you go to plus. If it is x, you go to x. So x is here. Let's read. Limit distance of travel on floor below the street is in sprinkler garage is 30 meter. Means that if this is 45 mentioned here, is because of the parking garage can be above ground. If it is above ground, then it allow 45 for the sprinkler. Sprinkler, eh? But if it is basement parking, even though if it is sprinkler, it's still 30 as mentioned here. Itu saja. Other than that, just follow. Very simple. Okay, so far so good. Okay, place of assembly. Let's go. This one is another uh, favorite project topic. Means that not necessary, not required to have that end limit, but the travel distance is 45 for the unsprinkled, 60 for the sprinkler, 61. Sorry. I don't know why it's 61 because others are 60. And uh, you see here, flexible pen also 60, but this one is 61. I don't know why. But in UBBL Selangor, they already uh, standardized, become 60. Okay, so now um, this is by request by Dr. Aiman. Please teach how to calculate. <laughs> okay, I try my best to, to teach um, simplest way to calculate fire requirement, um, fire staircase. Okay, number one, it is mentioned how to calculate. I mean, in, in Malay, dalil eh. Dalil, di mana nak baca tempatnya. Um, how to calculate uh, staircase calculation. It's by law 177. Okay. By law 177 already mentioned the how to calculate. But, of course, if you flip the by law 177, of course, you will try it, you don't understand. It's very, very hard to, to understand. Okay, so this is the simplest step I uh, list here. Number one, identify your purpose group. Very important. Number two, identify your floor area, each level, okay, of the level. So any level have different size, for example, then you might have different size of require, requirement. If it is different per group, then different. Then, choose factor. Factor number one, um, occupancy load factor. I put here A. So this A column is the occupancy load factor. So you can see this. This is only example. Yeah. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight don't have. Why eight don't have? Because eight is storage. Purpose group eight is storage, and purpose group eight shouldn't have people because it is storage. Other than this, these are all people, habitable space, other purpose, other occupancy load. Okay, so don't complicate things if you don't have um, uh, occupancy load for the uh, storage, I teach you how. So when you get the floor area, bahagi dengan the occupancy load factor, you get B, occupancy load. Okay, from occupancy load, uh, which is B, I don't write anywhere because it's a, it's a value. You use the value uh, divide by staircase factor, which is C, which is here, C. So this is the staircase factor. Then you get the number of unit stair. When you get unit stair, the answer is still unit. You must multiply by 550 millimeter or in meter, 0 0.55 meter. Subject to minimum, 
1,100 meter uh, millimeter clear wave. This is only one side of staircase. If it is a dog leg, then multiply, multiple years. It becomes 2,200. And then um, you have the railing, you have the uh, wall, then you get to add up. So that is basically the size. Uh, in simple words, the size is about parking lot size width. And then the length may be um, one and a half parking lot size. So that is the uh, basic size for the uh, staircase. Okay, um, maybe hard to understand. Let's try calculate. Uh, if you want to try together, let's try together. Okay, so purpose group, kita dah tahu uh, office. This is example, eh? um, square, square plan. We have two staircase, one each corner. Area is given 2,400 square meter for office, two staircase. So find the staircase width. So we have to do this 2,400 divided by occupancy load of office, which is 10. So it becomes 240. And then 240 divided by 60 because of the uh, staircase. So become four, four factor, four factor, uh, four units, then you add, you multiply by 550, you will get 2,200 millimeter cube, a uh, millimeter. Okay, so this is the calculation. Mana, mana aku nero ni? Tak nampak pula. Okay. So, um, you get the area divide by the occupancy load, which is here, 10. And then, um, you get the number, the occupancy factor, you divide by the staircase again, 60, which is I'm referring to this one. So, you get 4 unit width. So, you multiply by 550. You get... 2,200 millimeter minimum width. So this is actually total width. <clears throat> Again, total width of staircase. So uh, when you have two staircase, both must have 2,200. Why? Because whenever you do calculation like this, usually you must um, take a factor where one of the staircase is totally burned down. If it is burned down totally, the one staircase must be able to handle all 240 person. So that's why the size is 2200 mm. 2200 is actually only this half size, okay? Half of this only. This is actually, um, you need to double it up when you are doing uh, double leg. Uh, layout. <clears throat> okay, but what if you feel that the staircase is too big because of 2200, it felt too big, right? So, what if I add one more staircase? One more staircase, same um, plan, just add one more staircase um, so that it be uh, more balanced. <clears throat> So when you add one more staircase, what happened? Um, it's still same answer, which is uh, 2,200 meter uh, total staircase width. But now you have to divide by three staircase. When you divide by three staircase, just imagine one of the um, staircase is totally burned down. Then you have two left. When you have two left, 2,200 divided by two staircase, it becomes 1,100. So you can see the... Uh, alamak, alamak. Sorry. I think I press... Uh, okay. So you get this. Two staircase with 1,100 width is proposed. So this is 1.1 meter. This is 1.1 meter. And this also 1.1 meter. Why? If it is changed to... This one, both is still same, total 2,200 meter minimum width. 
Okay, so far, macam mana? Boleh faham? Uh, when you say minimum width, uh, does that include the handrail? Atau including uh, the handrail? No. So excluding? Oh, sorry. Actually, yes. Tapi bersyarat. <laughs> Syarat dia, the handrail must not more than 75 mm extruding from the wall. Nah, tu dah jadi detail lah. In short, boleh lah. Spiral staircase cannot be used for uh, fire. Uh, the reason is because um, um, fire staircase, um, it has its own requirement. Either it is uh, open ataupun uh, closed. But if it is open, um, escape staircase, yes, you can use spir spir spiral. But uh, spiral also must uh, comply to the same requirement, the width. So, yes, uh, okay, soalan tu, uh, when you have the uh, total total width of staircase, then you divide any number you want, okay? okay? It mentioned here, total width of staircase of the floor, only for this floor, okay? The floor is 2,400 meters square, so this is the number. If you um, divide into two, Two staircase can, but you must have very big staircase. If you divide by three staircase, then you get to design smaller staircase design. Uh, no, you don't uh, consider two. You only consider one. Consider two is too complicated. Okay, so far, okay, for more questions. Hello, saya ada soalan. Okay. Uh, macam mana nak kira yang macam yang sekarang ni, example ni dia bagi uh, pengiraan dia ikut uh, 10 gross tu kan, dekat dalam 7 schedule. And then yes, untuk uh, place of assembly tu, dia pakai 1.5 net. Jadi macam mana eh, pengiraan kalau untuk place of assembly? Okay, the assembly um, sama. Calculate je macam biasa, means that um, if you have the floor area bahagi 1.5 Don't worry about net, okay, net ataupun gross, don't worry Itu uh, untuk real project Your project, um, I believe is not real, is hypothetical So just use the number Even in uh, part 3 exam pun, pakai je Okay, thank you Uh -huh. That's one question from uh, Arkana. Uh, okay. Do both staircase need to be in the open space? How about one room is linked to the other staircase? Is that okay? Link? Okay, that become um, um, itu dah jadi um, complicated sikit. That's um, kalau link ni dia ada um, how to say this one two staircase linked by corridor Uh, it must be protected corridor. Ini macam uh, shopping mall uh, cinema where you have a protected corridor that link to the staircase. Usually you have that kind of uh, system so that uh, you can channel your uh, uh, occupants to the safer uh, fire staircase. But I think don't too complicated. If you have um, uh, too many staircase, then Something wrong with the design juga lah. Usually you want to design minimum as possible. Do I answer the question? <laughs> okay, so macam mana? Uh, should I proceed? Yeah, I, I think I don't know whether there, there's other questions on this. I, I can proceed now, eh? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I think um, this is the last last slide, sebenarnya. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so um, last slide. Uh, firefighting leave. Um, this only applicable to uh, floor level above 18.3 meters high. Means that 
um, in common it should be around six story betul tak so six story height of building then you have firefighting lift uh, lower than that you don't require firefighting lift you just maybe need um, passenger lift or service lift but not necessarily fire if it is fire it must be um, reach this level okay um, and then they have uh, more uh, things when you have fire lift you must have firefighting lobby kalau you tak ada firefighting lobby then you need to make sure the distance of the uh, door to be further from uh, the distance is enough uh, from the uh, firefighting lift um yep that's all betul habis all the best i hope it's not too fast not too slow <laughs> so yes um, i do have a um, uh, architecture education channel if you want to see more i have um, you can just visit my uh, youtube.com slash farisilmi you can um, of course please subscribe so that um uh, apa, more people I can have more ideas to what to share alright uh, thanks architect for this uh, uh, can we just open up questions uh, from the participants from the students if they have yep, yep. yeah yep. boleh boleh I can stop share yes please yeah okay uh, anyone has uh, questions on on the thing that you have shared can be double back hmm I think um, double deck ni only apply to 30 story and above. Um, I cannot answer lah sebab um, hampir tak ada. But kat LCC, I think they use one of the firefighting uh, lift is double deck. LCC lah. But uh, other buildings, no. Usually it's 30, 30 stories and above lah kalau nak buat uh, double deck ni. What is the width of firefighting lift? Uh, this one, I let your lecturer to uh, apa, ajar pula. <laughs> there are many, many kinds of um, firefighting lift. Okay. Um, especially uh, these days, um, firefighting kena juga allow uh, stretcher to be uh, entered, you know, because in the past, some of the fire lift stretcher tak masuk, tak muat. So you kena allow stretcher untuk masuk then that's the fire lift. So stretcher punya size um, I think 1.8 minimum. So allow 2 meter to 2.5 then okay. What do you mean double the requirement? Double the requirement is when you have um, automatic sprinkler then the requirement of uh, travel distance and also uh, compartmentation is double especially um, for your calculation in the staircase distance uh, it is very uh, crucial um, so about, um, for example like travel distance for uh, hotel for example is 45 sorry uh, 45 meter is sprinkler it's already given so double this for uh, use for the others the the apa nama tu? Um, compartment uh, and also uh, limit of uh, floor area. Do I miss any questions? Uh, not from the comments. And anyone has uh, uh, other questions to ask? Anything related to your project at the moment? Uh, some of you are uh, designing libraries. Uh, um, yeah, most yeah, of you are yeah. designing offices as well. Boleh. Boleh. Anything else, guys? Current project. I, I believe that, that there's uh, master students here as well. Ah, okay. So they, they just wanted to revise on some of the points, of maybe. Course. Master yeah, students, dia punya project mesti ada at least dua atau tiga purpose group lah. Especially, dia suka letak apa nama, um, the auditorium, uh, top floor, uh, then very complicated. 
Um, uh, I think I have a question. When we talk about fire mm -hmm. hydrants, right? Um, you said that you can share fire hydrants within uh, with a few lots. Is that correct? Uh -huh. So, it's so basically, um, kalau dah ada on the road, um, hmm. you just use that one. You don't have to uh, provide your own. So basically, the 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 the, the uh, distance uh, from that fire hydrant should be uh, not less, not more than forty five meters from your entrance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hey, sorry, no, because not less, not more. Not more. No more than. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Tapi biasanya tu projek yang besar lah, um, one acre hmm. and be bigger than one acre, then me you may need. If it is less than one acre, I dah try. So no matter what, it's still lepas lah. So um, okay lah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Um, just want to share. Um, for the purpose group seven phase of assembly. Um, tadi one of the student tanya um, because the uh, occupancy factor is very low, right? 1.5, 0 0.7, kan? It's because of um, place of assembly, for example, auditorium, apa semua, okay? You can check by law 181. By law 181, dia ada tulis very detail um, the occupancy factor. Sorry, 180, bukan 181. Okay, from situ ada tunjuk um, kalau you buat uh, macam uh, restoran um, yang macam re apa Chinese restoran yang dine in besar besar tu macam or um, macam dewan kawin dalam hotel, okay, uh, those will be under this uh, by law one eighteen. You can check. Um, you have a different uh, apa nama different uh, occupancy load. So with that, um, bila you punya factor is very small, your occupancy load is very high. So bila you divide by staircase requirement, it becomes very big. So the tangga akan jadi macam six units. Kadang-kadang kalau kalau if you do it, kadang-kadang is up to fourteen units of staircase. So fourteen units of staircase multiply by uh, five hundred fifty millimeter then you get very, very big staircase. Then you need to have big staircase. Means, it means, letak je kat ground. Letak kat ground, then you tak payah buat staircase. You letak dekat upper floor, then you have to provide very big staircase. That's why kat hotel, you can see very grand, apa, um, big staircase. It's actually to provide that. Kalau you pergi ke macam, um, Mana? That's why macam tempat-tempat lain macam uh, KLCC Convention Center, the staircase is actually very big. You can see besar-besar, and then the escalator also uh, uh, considered sebahagian daripada nya. And um, actually dia ada banyak tangga-tangga yang hidden staircase, which is actually for uh, services ke apa ke, only open during um, uh, emergency, but not for uh, normal operation. Normal operation, they will allow you to use um, escalator and normal staircase. And then, um, they are can, uh, apa lagi? The way it designed, it should be as as low as possible to the ground lah. Kalau letak ke atas, then very susah. The reason is because when you put, for example, auditorium at the 10th floor of your building, for example, then, the staircase requirement is big. And then the staircase size cannot shrink downwards. It's not logic, right? Kalau you buat sudden, uh, mula -mula staircase is besar and then suddenly it shrinks at the lower floor, kan? Contohnya dekat lower floor is office, atas ada auditorium. Then you must carry through the size of the staircase from top to the ground. Kalau you buat terbalik macam tu, then you suffer lah. Your office have a lot of unimportant staircase lah. Then you become un inefficient in designing. So benda-benda ni must be... Um, that's why I already give the tips, which is the five one. Those five in order. 
you follow that in order, then hopefully you are safe lah in uh, designing. And then, um, then you design lah whatever you do. Okay, tak nak panjang sangat, nanti terlebih masa ke, apa ke. Okay, I think uh, if there isn't any any uh, any more questions, uh, I would like to thank uh, architect uh, for the me for you uh, for, for for the for the talk. I think it was useful, not just for the uh, bachelor, but also also for uh, masters as well, and for myself. That's uh, a revision for myself. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, um, we, we hope to see you again if if you have time to uh, talk on uh, other fire requirements. There are, there are a lot that, that we haven't yet uh, um, mentioned. Uh, we will in 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 the coming weeks we will look into uh, sprinkles. Uh, um, uh, fire tanks and all those uh, additional details that you mentioned earlier. We, we uh, haven't touched on that yet. So, so uh, you're supposed think, to be... I think yeah? it to you, you pun boleh ajar lah, Iman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach them that. Okay, uh, again, thanks a lot for uh, for for being uh, with us today. And yeah, thanks welcome. students and all the other participants from uh, either from UTM or outside. Okay, um, so... On that note, okay. thank you. Yeah. I hope all, all the best to you. Um, yep. And then design best de design for Malaysia future. Yeah, okay, thank, thanks a lot. <laughs> all right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.